Kids, I hope that you and your families are doing well and um, that you know you're seeing something of God's leading in your life. Um, it's always so reassuring that to know that God is with us and you know although we go through times of grief and suffering you know um, we are told in the word that weeping may endure for a night but joy comes in the morning. Yes we have periods of grief, of suffering, of trials, things that we would rather not experience but we are assured um, that you know what a brighter day is ahead and so we are to keep holding on to God and allowing him to have his way in our lives and I think that's so precious. Let us pray. Dear Father we thank you so much for your goodness and your mercies towards us your children. Lord, it's a, it's a huge privilege to be able to say, you know, our Father, Abba Father, and um, to know that that's how you love us as your children, and um, that you intervene in our lives in such an amazing way as, as to come close, to hold us close, as to share the experiences that we, um, you know, we experience, and I think that's so precious, and I'm praying, dear Father, just as you've allowed us to consider Job, and, and the suffering Lord that he experienced Lord um, Lord uh, open our eyes so that we may understand allow your Holy Spirit to give us understanding take the scales from our eyes speak to us for we are listening to you we ask this in Jesus holy and blessed name amen Oh, saints, it's just so good to have God in our lives. And I'm so thankful for this wonderful promise that we found in John chapter 14, verses 1 to 6. Let us say it together. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place that I'm going. Thomas said, Lord, we don't know where you're going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And I think that's so powerful, yeah, that Jesus is the life. Yeah, that's what we're focusing on on this moment. And, you know, as we consider the, the, the account of Job, we um, read um, the first 10 verses of chapter 3, um, in which Job cursed the day that he was born. Um, you know, that is intense suffering for you to do something like that. Um, he was suffering, you know, these boils that covered him from, you know, from the sole of his feet to the crown of his head, just covered. He was in misery and he expressed the extent of his, his uh, you know, of how he was really feeling, you know. And as I said um, yesterday that, you know, I, in my ministry, I, I do encounter situations with, with members, you know, and, and they, the, the, it's, it's as though the rug has been taken from under their feet and they come and they say things in shock and disbelief that, you know, as they try to make sense of everything. And I praise God that I'm able to be there and to not judge them. And I just reassure them, listen, I know you're in trauma. I know you're trying to make sense of this and don't worry because God is here, yeah? And, and, and simply being able to listen and to pray. I've, I've seen God turn things around and these very same people, I've had the joy of, of rejoicing with them, you know? And you know, when things have all turned around. And so let us try not to be um, judgmental of each other, you know, um, because, you know, to walk in someone's shoes and to experience what they experience is quite different from simply looking on. Yeah. Um, now, Job was lamenting and you know, I praise God that he is so big and so understanding, so wise that he has allowed laments to be recorded in the word of God, his word, the Bible. And, um, you know, you've got a book that's named Lamentations, yes, um, written by Jeremiah the prophet. 
and um, there was much to lament, believe you me, uh, as the children of Israel went astray. Um, and, um, you know, throughout the, the, the Bible, you see these laments. And, and one of the places that you find it is in the Psalms. Now, the Psalms were actually, it was actually the songbook for the Jews in the, in the Old Testament. You know, it was, it was uh, you know, and, and it was there and it, you could sing these songs and you'd have the songs of praise and adoration and, and, and so much that was there. But one of the major areas within the Psalms is that of the lament, lamentation. And so, um, you know, in fact, it might surprise you to know this, but a third of the Psalms are um, of lamentations where the saints are in great distress they're upset something has befallen them and sometimes it's um you know you have you have two types of, of lament one that reflects um you know suffering on a personal individual scale and then you also have the lament you know that reflect um in the communal the nation suffering you know and and they these songs were there that you know they would be able to sing to express um, how they were feeling, you know, and I, I just think it's absolutely awesome that that it's there, and um, you know, one third of the Psalms, yeah. So that is quite amazing um, when you, you when you think of that, and you know, oh, I would like us to um, consider um, one of the Psalms. Um, in fact, there's one here in Psalm 12. Let me read that one. I'll turn that one to that for you. Psalm 12. A psalm of lament. Let's see what it says. Let's get to it. Here it is. It's a psalm of David. Yeah? And it says, um, Help, Lord, for no one is faithful anymore. Those who are loyal have vanished from me, uh, from the human race, sorry. Everyone lies to their neighbour. They flatter with their lips, uh, but harbour deception in their hearts. May the Lord silence all flattering lips and every boastful tongue. Those who say, by our tongues we will prevail, our own lips will defend us. Who is Lord over us? Because the poor are plundered and the needy groan. I will now arise, says the Lord. I will protect them from those who malign them. Um, and the words of the Lord are flawless, like silver purified in a crucible, like gold refined seven times. You, Lord, will keep the needy safe and will protect us forever from the wicked who freely freely strut about when what is vile is honored by the human race and that's a lament of David yeah he's, he's recognizing the you know the corruption that's there in the nation he, he's noting the, the depravity of the human heart in in these lies these flattering lips but but their hearts are corrupt and how the um the poor are oppressed and and he's lamenting that and, and, and that's, you know, it's, it's a very real thing. Another psalm that I'd like us to go to is um, Psalm 22. And, uh, you know, many of us know Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd. And we love the reassurance that that brings. But um, not everyone is aware of Psalm um, 23, 22, sorry. And um, this is how it starts. My God, my God. Why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me? Um, so far from my cries of anguish. My God, I cry out day, um, but you do not answer me. By night, but I find no rest. Yet you are enthroned as the Holy One. You are the, whole, the one Israel praises. Can you, can you see the dilemma here? It, it's, it's, it's quite amazing. You know, it's, again, the psalmist here is David. David has, has written a, a, quite a number of the psalms, but there are other, um, who, others who also write and contribute to the psalm. Um, now, it's just quite amazing that he should, he should write that. You know, my God, my God. Now, the, the amazing thing, this lament... Yeah, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Would be the very lament that Jesus Christ would utter on the cross when he was dying. Before he gave up his last breath, he would cry out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? You see, sin cuts. 
it severs that connection with God. And, 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 and that was what Jesus was dreading in the Garden of Gethsemane. And he uses this lament to express his anguish before he died. Yeah. Yeah, and so it, it's quite amazing that our God allows these kind of texts to be um, recorded in the Bible. What is he saying to us? He's saying, listen, I know that you go through hard times. I know that you um, experience pain and inner anguish and upset and turmoil. I know that. And I want you to know that I want to hear how you really feel. You don't have to make it all flowery. You don't have to, you know, you, you know, try and, and, and make it sound good. When, when, when you're in a bad place, tell me exactly how you feel. I want to know that. Yeah? I'm here as your father and I love you and I want the best for you. And this is exactly what we see in the book of Job. Job opens up in an amazing way, in, in such a way that actually his friends seem to have found it quite uncomfortable. And we're going to be considering their reaction. And, 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 and for many of us, when we see people um, um, lament and we hear them lament in their suffering, sometimes we find it uncomfortable. But recognize that God does not. He wants to hear. And, and when he hears those cries, just like the, the cries of his people as they were in Egypt, he reaches out, he intervenes, and he's looking for a way of saving his children. And so I praise God today for the inclusion of laments in the Bible. It gives hope to me, and I hope that it gives great hope to you that God wants to know how we are. He wants us to engage with him on a very real you know in a real way and a level that says you know what God I'm not okay I really I'm not okay and I need you let us pray dear father I thank you so much for your goodness and mercies towards me and each of your children Lord how amazing that you know we can come to you with our upset you know, sometimes we, we you know, we, we just want to throw our hands in the air and, and cry out, how long, you know, or why me? What have I done to deserve this? And you, you are there in the midst with us. And sometimes we can't feel your presence, Lord, we're going to be honest. Sometimes we can't, but, but somehow, Lord, we, we hold on in faith and we cry out, just like Job kept crying out. He, he was there, he was speaking, and he was speaking things that, that maybe his friends didn't like to hear. But Lord, he kept on crying out and, and you were listening. And I thank you that you listen to us and, and you, you experience that pain with us and, and you're with us and you're holding us and you're carrying us through it. And I thank you with all my heart for that. And I pray, Lord, even now, that as you take us through this pandemic, as, as many of us are grieving, dear Father, hold us, sustain us and, and strengthen us, Lord, for we need you. I ask this in Jesus' holy and blessed name. Amen. God bless you, saints. I pray that, you know, God will strengthen you through your times of difficulty. Know that you can share with him exactly how you feel. God bless you.